Hi again, Bernie Maloney from Powered by Teams with another short video uh, with tips for job search. This one's going to be about resumes and interviews. Now, if you haven't already, I do recommend you first watch the video on networking. So you want to leverage the power of your network. You want to build and expand your network because that way a whole bunch of people are helping you make connections for your next position. It's way more impactful to have a warm introduction. Hey, you really should take a look at this resume from Bernie. He's great. Than it is to come in cold. It's the difference between coming in the side door with that referral and coming in the front door just applying online. If you haven't already, I do recommend you go to this URL, download the PDF with all of the notes that I'm going to be sharing in this video as I give you some tips on resumes and interviewing. So let's go ahead and step into this. So resumes and interviews are really kind of the front door of coming in on your job search. So something to know, particularly about resumes, they really are going to need to catch attention in the first 30 to 60 seconds that somebody's going to read them. By the time your resume gets to a human being, they've got a whole bunch that they're going to need to review, and you want to catch their reader's eye in that first 30 to 60 seconds. You want to get them to say, oh yeah, this is one that I want to be sure that I read fully later, versus the one that ah, I'm going to put it over in the read never pile. Okay, and I'm going to give you some tips for that. Let me give you a realistic thing. I was hiring a team of 10 coaches for a client, and they were very picky. Uh, I would have to read through 100 resumes to find enough that I could conduct 25 informationals that could lead me to three to five candidates that met that client's criteria to fill just one position. So human beings are going to be reading a lot of resumes. You want to catch their attention really fast. I'm going to give you a couple of tips for that. The first one is a tip about the way that you format kind of the overall structure of your resume, and it comes out of newspapers. So there's a term in newspapers above the fold as a newspaper layout. And um, that's where I recommend, in essence, you have a mini resume in the first half page of your resume. See, newspapers, the first half of the front page, if you think of a newspaper, it's always folded over when you see it laying in a newsstand or in a vending machine. And that first half page is meant to sell you the newspaper, to get enough attention that you're going to want to read the rest of it. So think about putting the essence of your resume in that first half of a page. That's an easy way to get people's attention. Still, yeah, put the information about how to contact you and the type of position you're looking for. But think in that first half page of condensing things down to some of your key accomplishments that are going to catch the eye to get people to put it into the read later versus the read never pile. Now, a couple of other things to keep in mind across your resume is you're going to want to think about this in terms of jobs to be done. So jobs to be done theory is something that I talk about in my product owner classes. <clears throat> Customers don't buy products. Um, they, uh, they buy solutions to a situation. So I heard it from Clay Christensen. Customers don't buy drills. They buy holes. Their need, their job to be done is to put a hole in something. And the easiest way to do that is to um, buy a drill. So in the case of hiring a person, the company has a job to be done. And that's what they have in mind when they're reading your resume. So what you're putting in your resume is not so much about what you want to do, but instead it's what they get in hiring you. So frame the information that way about the impact that you can have for them. Now, some other things that can help your resume is numbers tend to catch the eye's attention. So if you've got any numbers in your background, and by that I mean like revenue that you've helped deliver, number of teams that you've worked on, Impact to the business, time that you've saved, is really impactful. So any of those numbers that you can put into your resume, particularly in that first half, they help to catch the reader's eye and get your resume put in the read later versus the read never pile. So think of the numbers that you can start to insert in your resume. As you go a little bit further down, okay, for each position, and I do recommend below that first half page, that's where you start going into your positions. Okay, and really, even though I've got a 25 plus year career, my resume is no more than two and a half pages. It doesn't need to be long. Okay. 
I've read eight and 10 page resumes and they're mm, kind of hard to get through. Again, you want to make it easy for people to find the good stuff. So for any of your position listings, consider um, make, framing them with that summary statement that you put on each position with something like an impact summary. Achieved X by doing Y. So that's really going to help people connect with some of the value that you have delivered that you might be able to deliver for them. It's going to help them relate better to how you could fulfill some of those jobs to be done that they've got. Okay. Also, um, for the bullet items in your resume, consider putting action verbs as the first word in any of the bullet items that you've got there. And usually three to five bullets for any position are plenty. So make them juicy. Those action verbs, they give a sense of dynamism to your resume. They get some engagement from people. Oh, this is somebody who's a go-getter that they're really going to be able to help out. Okay, so those are some tips for your resume. In the next video, I'm going to continue this and I'm going to give you some tips for going through the interview to take you from a regular, ordinary interview really into a top-notch interview. So uh, if you'd like to stay in touch with me or you'd like some one-on-one -on -one coaching on this, if you've been through one of my classes, you know how to reach me. But if you haven't, um, here's where you can get my contact information. And <clears throat> I do make offers that are free to students in my classes. If you found value in this video, would really love to have you share it out with your networks because this isn't just about uh, making these videos for my classes, my clients. This is really meant to be a contribution for the world. So thanks, I'll see you in the next video where we talk about your interview.